In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use HashiCorp Vault database secrets engine to securely generate short-lived credentials to securely connect to a database. I'm going to use MongoDB as my test database, but Vault also supports a wide range of databases, including all your favorites. The architecture is really quite simple for something so powerful. The client application connects to Vault using one of Vault's auth types. Upon successful authentication and authorization, Vault generates a pair of temporary credentials in the target database. Vault returns this to the application, and finally, the application uses the temporary credentials to connect to the database. So why should you use the database secrets engine? Well, if it's not already obvious, here are the reasons. Firstly, by default, Vault allows you to centrally store and manage secrets. Secondly, the database secrets engine allows you to auto-provision database credentials, increasing speed and agility and sitting nicely in the DevOps workflow. Thirdly, Vault enforces the automatic rotation of database credentials to reduce the likelihood that stolen credentials are used to access the database maliciously. So in this video, I'm going to first set up a local MongoDB instance. Then I'm going to set up the database secrets engine on Vault and use it to connect to the MongoDB instance. Then I'm going to create a app role, which is a auth type in Vault, as well as a Vault policy allowing it access to the database secrets. Then finally, I'll write a small Python app to get the database credentials from Vault and use them to connect to the MongoDB instance. As we will be creating keys in MongoDB, I'm going to first create and run a MongoDB instance using the official MongoDB container image from Docker Hub. Note that in production, you would also configure a persistent volume to persist the data given that containers themselves are ephemeral. Next, I'm going to use the Mongo shell to access the database using the credentials that I used to create the instance. Next, I'm going to create a database called my database using the command use my database. Then I'm going to insert some dummy data in a collection called my collection using the command db.mycollection.insertmany. And I'm going to pass to it the records I want created. And that's it. Okay, now we're going to configure the database secrets engine in Vault. I've set up my Vault instance in Kubernetes. If you don't know how, have a look at my HashiCorp Vault implementation and usage video for an in-depth tutorial. The first step is to log into the Vault instance. To do this in Kubernetes, we will issue the command kubectl exec and specify the namespace of where you've deployed Vault and the name of the Vault pod and the shell that you want to use. Then log into Vault with the command Vault login. I'm going to log in with the root token, but obviously in production, you should never use the root user. Once I'm authenticated, I'm going to issue the command Vault Secrets Enable Database. This will enable the database secrets engine so that we can use it. Then I'm going to create a new connection by running vault write database slash config slash my MongoDB database local, which will be the name of the connection. I'm then going to pass to it the vault plugin name, which is MongoDB database plugin, the role my role local, which we will create later, the connection URL to our MongoDB instance, ensuring that we parameterize the username and password, and finally the username and password. Note that I've used the IP address of my local device and not localhost for MongoDB because localhost in this context will end up being the vault container, which isn't where I created the MongoDB instance. Next, we're going to create the role my role local by running vault write database slash roles slash my role local. We're going to give it the name of the connection in db underscore name. The creation statement refers to what permissions we want the role to have on the MongoDB database. In our case, we only wanted accessing the database we created previously, which was called my database, and we only wanted to have read access to this database. As the database credentials are ephemeral, we also want to restrict it to a TTL of one hour and a max TTL of 24 hours. The max TTL is only used for scenarios where you have a long running process that goes past the default TTL. To check whether everything's been configured properly, let's see if we can get the database credentials. To do this, we will run vault read database slash creds slash my role local. And as you can see, vault has gone into the database and created a new user with a name that's too long for me to say on this video. 
In order for us to use the database secrets engine, we need a way of authenticating to Vault and getting the permissions to get the database credentials. To do this, we will use AppRoll, which is a Vault auth method, but you can use any auth method you want. We will also create a policy that allows access to the database connection and the role we set up in the previous steps. On our Vault instance, we will create a configuration file containing the permissions we want the policy to have. In our case, we want it to have read access to the database role, my role local, and the database connection, my MongoDB database local, which we've created in the previous steps. Then we will create the policy using vault policy write database slash home slash vault slash database policy dot hco, which is the policy file we just created. Next, we'll create the app role by running vault write auth slash app role slash role slash database policies equals to database, which is the policy that we just created. Finally, using the app role, we will get the app role role ID by running vault read auth slash app role slash role slash database slash role ID. Make sure to save the role ID as we will be using it later. To get the secret ID, we will run vault write f auth slash app role slash role slash database slash secrets ID. Save the secrets ID as well. Now, the reason we save the role ID and the secrets ID of the app role is so that we can use them to retrieve the temporary database credentials to access MongoDB. To do this, we will build a simple Python app using Vault and MongoDB SDKs. The first step is to create a Python file. We will start by importing the Vault and Mongo SDKs. Next, we will initialize the Vault client. Then we will log into Vault using the role ID and the secret ID that we saved from the previous step. Next, we will retrieve the MongoDB credentials from Vault. I'm going to also print them out to console just so that you can cross-check them later in the MongoDB database. Next, we will create a MongoDB connection using the credentials we retrieved. We are also going to ensure the auth source is set to my database which if you recall is the only database the Vault database role is permissioned for. Next, we're going to set the DB to my database and the collection to my collection. And finally, we're going to run the collection.find function, which will return everything from my database. And then we'll loop through this and print everything to console. Then we will close the connection. Now, if you run the script, you can see that the username and password is returned by Vault to be used on the MongoDB database. And all the records in my database have been returned. Now, if we log into the MongoDB instance, navigate to my database and run show users, you can see that this username matches the one that Vault just returned to us. This is also the credential that the Python app used to read the contents of my database. To summarize, and for those of us who are more visually inclined, let's log into the Vault UI. In the secrets tab, you can see that the database secrets engine is enabled. You can also see that there is one connection and if you click into it, this is the connection my Mongo database local, the one that we created with the CLI. And at the bottom, you can see the database role we created called my role local. And if you click into it, you can see the config for the role such as its permissions and TTL. Now, if we go into the policies, you can see the database policy that we created, which allows it access to the database connection and the role we created in the database secrets engine. Finally, we also created an app role, which you won't be able to see on the UI. That's it folks, hope you enjoyed the video. Please remember to like and subscribe.